Hello everyone. Um, today we are going to use uh, the AWS SageMaker Canvas uh, to build a uh, complete machine learning pipelines. So from uh, cleaning data, um, explore data, uh, and to select our uh, models and also train the models automatically until that we can make predictions with the trained model. And also, if you like, you can even share your models or deploy your models in the production. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so we are still using the AWS uh, Academy Lab. Uh, so we go to the AWS console. And so today we're going to use two AWS services. The first is the SageMaker, and the second is the S3 Bucket. So uh, let's first, let's go to our uh, S3 Bucket. So let's... Uh, upload the data. So we're going to use S3 bucket, S3 service, and uh, we need to create a bucket. Uh, so for this lab, uh, so let's give it a name. Uh, let's call it house price data. And uh, we just leave the default settings. And uh, looks like this already exists. Uh, so the, the bucket name should be globally unique. So all right, and let's also go ahead and download the data. So you can find the data uh, from my GitHub uh, website. Uh, I also post the, the URL in the uh, video description. So we download this data set. And then we go to uh, S3 and we open this uh, bucket. And we're going to upload the downloaded uh, data. So let's click upload. Uh, so I'm just going to drag my data and uh, click upload. So we it is a CSV file that contains uh, the house price uh, information. Okay, so now the data has been uploaded. Uh, now let's go to the SageMaker. And if this is your first time uh, to use uh, the Canvas. So Canvas is a new service that we can build and train uh, machine learning models without coding, always unvalidated coding. So if this is your first time, we need to actually start to create a domain. So let's go ahead and create a domain. And we're going to use a uh, setup for organization because we are using the Academy account. So that's a required uh, step uh, if we are, since we are using the Academy account. And uh, we can give a domain name. Uh, so let's just call it demo. Uh, we're going to see a uh, login through our IAM. And then we go to next. Uh, and for the second step, uh, we need to use an existing IAM role, and which is a lab role. So that's because we're using Academy, Academy uh, Lab. And the next, uh, so here you see an error, so we can ignore that errors. Uh, we could go to the canvas uh, configurations. And then uh, at the step we are ready to use models configurations, uh, we're going to use an existing uh, acquisition role. And we can enter that existing acquisition role. And for that role, so if we need to type uh, like this. So uh, where we need to replace this string with our uh, account ID and we can find account ID on the uh, top right. We can copy this account ID and also replace this with our account ID. So we are still using the, the lab row. All right, and we go to next. And uh, next. Uh, so here we're going to choose the public uh, internet access. Okay, so that will make our uh, future jobs uh, easier. And then we're going to choose using our default VPC. And we need to choose at least two subnet. So, uh, so uh, you can choose any of those subnet. And for security groups, let's just use the default one. 
Okay, and now we go ahead and click next. And next. Uh, so here this just again review the settings. So we just click submit. Uh, it may take uh, like five to 10 minutes uh, that to set up the domain. So uh, I'm going to pause the video here and I will come back when the domain is ready. Okay, uh, so now we can see that our domain is uh, in service. Uh, so we can click that domain uh, and we're going to build a user um, profile. So we go to user profiles and we're going to see add a user. Uh, let's give it a name. Uh, demo user, uh, we are going to still using the lab role. Uh, we'll keep everything as default. And uh, I think in the canvas uh, configurations, uh, we're going to do the same uh, setup. That is, we're going to use an existing acquisition role, where we are going to provide the uh, a string like this, and we're going to copy our uh, account ID and replace that with with our account. Uh, replace uh, paste our account ID here. So, so we use our account and also the liberal uh, within our account. All right, and then we click next, uh, next, and. Uh, submit. All right, uh, so now I think our user, uh, this should not take too long, so our user is not is ready to use. So here we go to the canvas, uh, and we're going to choose the demo user, and we're going to open canvas. Uh, so it may take like uh, 30 seconds or so to set up the, uh, the canvas. Okay, uh, so this is how the uh, AWS Amazon SageMaker canvas uh, look like. So on the left side, uh, we can clean the data. Uh, there are also the existing data set. We can build our data. And uh, when you deploy, uh, build our models and when your model uh, being created, and you can deploy the models and uh, check the status here. And they also have some ready to use models and also some general AI applications. So let's first, let's go to the data wrangler. And uh, this is where we are going to uh, uh, import our data from our S3 bucket. So let's import, uh, because our data is in the CSV format, so we choose CSV and we choose uh, S3. And you can also upload data from your local computer or you can import it like from the databases or from the other resources. So let's choose S3. Uh, we start our data into this uh, bucket. And now you can see our uh, house price data. Okay, so in the data set, we have ID, uh, the house price, the number of the bedroom, bathroom, etc. Uh, let's just go ahead and import our data. Uh, we need to give it a data set name, so house price data. Okay, uh, so now this is a data flow. So uh, when we have the data imported, so we're going to clean the data, um, uh, split the data, etc. And you can save this entire process and we call it data flow uh, to apply the same procedure to other data set. So when the data is being imported, let's first uh, check the data type. Uh, so we double click. And we can see ID is a uh, uh, integer. So let's change that one to a string format because uh, we don't want ID to, you know, uh, in the model to use that as a feature to predict the house price. Uh, we also have other data like price where we have missing values. Uh, we have outliers, uh, the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, we also have like a lot of missing values and also the outliers. Uh, and we also have the other uh, uh, features or columns like status, parking, etc. 
so here let's also change the zip code. So we also have zip code and let's change that one to a string format as well. Okay, so zip code to string format and also ID to string format. So we want uh, both uh, to not be used as numbers in the model prediction. So let's preview this change. Okay, so now you can see ID are now considered uh, strings. And if we look at the, the zip code, so they are all so look, uh, considered as strings. So let's update. Okay, uh, so that is our uh, first step. Uh, we can also add additional steps. So uh, for example, uh, in our host type, we have condo, single family home, uh, etc. And we find out they also have some uh, land or lot. So let's see if I can find it. Yes, so we have some land or lot. Uh, they are also uh, in our data set. However, their price are significantly different from real houses. And also for those records, we can see they don't have the information like the number of bedrooms or bathrooms. So we are going to fill out the house type that is land a lot. So let's add a new transformer. And here they provide a lot of the operations. Uh, so let's say we're going to looking for the rows. So we're going to manage rows. Uh, for the rows, you can see we can shuffle, sort, or field. We can see field. Uh, for the host type, we see the host type does not equal to uh, lot or land. Okay, and uh, let's preview uh, this operation and looks like, so now you can see after we filled out the uh, land a lot, uh, we see not, uh, we just significantly reduce those missing values in the bedroom and those bathrooms. So let's add that step. Okay, uh, next we're going, uh, so if we just look at those, uh, the records, we can see we have something that uh, we may not want to use in our predictions. So for example, price is F, definitely we want to use that one because that's our target. So we can try to predict the house price based on the number of bedroom and bathrooms. So we definitely want to keep the bathroom, bedroom because those are important uh, features. However, if you look at the air condition, we can see we have three categories, so true or false. So whether or not a house has an air condition or not, uh, well, it is important feature. Uh, however, we can see it says that only less than half of the house have air condition. I don't think that is the case. I think this, uh, I think because people, when they type their data, so uh, in the, um, in data source, they, they just didn't type whether or not they have air condition because I believe uh, in the real world, and this is a real data set, that uh, most of the houses, they have air condition. Yes. So I think this is an error. So I'm going to drop that column. So if you go ahead and find out the uh, manage columns, and you can see you can rename columns, move columns, or drop columns. So I'm going to drop this one, air conditioning, because I believe this is an error, uh, that because most houses should have air conditions. Uh, status, uh, is that for sale or for sale by owner? I don't think this is uh, important in our prediction, so I'm going to drop this one as well. Uh, parking, parking is very important. However, it, as we can see that half of the uh, of this column that the values are missing. So I'm going to drop this one because it is important, but we don't have, we have a lot of missing values. Let's see, I'm going to drop parking. Uh, and for the same reason, I'm going to drop the heating. Just because we have too many uh, missing values. Uh, so let's check the others. Okay, um, this is the year that house has been built. 
Uh, right now, it is an integer, and we can see it have we have outlier because we have house at it back that will build back to one thousand and eight um uh one thousand eight hundred. So that's like two hundred years ago. So that is an outlier. Uh, we also do not use MLSID, so let's also drop that one. And for the zip code, um, uh, we can see majority of the um, of the uh, of zip code are in of the of the records are in one zip code, so that is two two eight zero one. So uh, I'm not sure that can help because it's kind of like most records are in the same zip code, although zip code is important in, in uh, because locations are important. Uh, so let's, um, I'm going to drop this one because I don't think it will be help because majority of the code, like almost 90% of the record are in the same zip code. So it will not help to predict the house price. Uh, same thing, uh, and our floors and also roof. So. Well, of course, they are important, but they don't have, we don't have, uh, we have a lot of missing values. So I'm going to drop the flaws and roof. Uh, and also uh, architecture, uh, a lot of missing values. So drop that one. Uh, and also the other uh, fields that have a lot of missing values, like here, yeah. um, views. We are important, but we don't have the, the data. Um, did I? Yes, I select the views. Rooms, number of the rooms. Again, we have um, too much missing values. Uh, they also have other, so let's drop that. Okay, a uh, street. Well, of course, uh, location is significantly important, probably the most important one. Uh, however, uh, uh, it would be make more sense if we say like with the distance to the CDC or uh, which school district we are located. So if you just look at the, the strings, I don't think they can help. And also we can see the majority of the, like 90%, 80%, almost 80% of the values are other. So, so I don't think it, it will help. So I'm going to drop straight um, in the prediction as well. And lastly, I'm going to drop the heating Okay, so so this step we just dropped the columns that either we think they are they are not going to contribute to our predictions like the uh, the MLS IDs, uh, or we have a lot of missing value like heatings. So um, so now we are done with this step. Uh, let's add that one. Okay, so now we just dropped a bunch of the columns that we think will not uh, contribute in our um, prediction. Okay, uh, next, we see we still have uh, uh, some missing values. So like the bedrooms, we have some missing values. So the, the yellow bar here indicate missing values. Um, and also I believe uh, like lot sites, we also have missing values. So let's also, um, See, can we handle the missing values? So handle missing values. So let's say we're going to, uh, you can input, which means that you're going to predict the values for those missing values. Uh, or you are going to add indicator for missing values. Uh, I think the, the simplest way is, that the easiest way is that I just drop all the missing values. So I'm going to select all the columns. So if the column has a missing value, or if, uh, has a row that has missing value, I'm going to drop that row. So let's go ahead and add that. Okay, so now we, we can see we don't have any uh, missing values. Uh, next, uh, so 
I'm not sure whether or not you notice that if, if you look at the lot size, you can see we uh, this data is uh, pretty weird because we have a lot of the values that is less than 10, like 0 0.3, 4 0.7. And we also have some values that is above like 1,000, like 8,700. Okay, and those are belong to a lot size. So I guess, uh, actually, actually, I'm pretty much sure this error because some people, they typed acres in a lot size and some people, they typed uh, square foot uh, in a lot size. Uh, so this also is an error that in our data set. Uh, so let's try to handle that one. So this one actually is a, is a little bit hard to handle. So you can use uh, the customer uh, transformer uh, where you can use uh, Python code uh, to handle those errors. Uh, so I'm going to call this one clean lot size. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, a pandas uh, data frame function to uh, handle this error. So basically, uh, I'm looking at a data frame where lot size is great. So uh, uh, lot size is if that is less than 10, I will replace a value that this lot, the value, the existing value, times this number. So this is a number that one acre equals uh, how many square foot? That's, that's its number. So let's preview. And uh, let's look, check the, the data set. So that is a lot size. So now it looks like it makes more sense. So, and let's add this. Uh, step okay, so that cleaning the lot size. I wish uh, in the future uh, Canvas can have some easier way to to clean those clean uh, clean the errors like this, um, so that we don't need to write a Python code. All right, uh, outliers. So uh, it's up to you. So if you want to remove outliers, for example, this is an outlier uh, that is too expensive, and this outlier that has too many uh, bedrooms. Uh, we also have some outliers uh, like in, in lot size and also here that has been built. So this is really up to you. So if you want to remove outliers, you can just go ahead and add transformers. And I believe they also provide a function called handle outliers. Uh, so here you can choose how do you want to handle outliers. And to me, I think um, and then let's just try it. So let's see, we're going to, I'm trying to see if I can remove the, the, the outlier in the lot size and also the bedrooms uh, and also here that has been built. Okay. See if we're going to remove that. So I'm going to add a preview. Okay, so we are able, yeah, definitely we can uh, remove the outliers in the bedrooms. Um, can we? Remove that uh, so in the you know, lot size. We cannot. Uh, we can also not remove that one. So let's try use uh, robust. And let's see bedrooms, lot size, uh, and also uh, here that house being built. Let's preview. Okay, uh, bedroom. Uh, outlier being uh, removed. Uh, let's look at the uh, the year that has been built. Okay, uh, so in this case, we can see that outlier was indeed being removed. However, lot size is still here. So uh, again, so it's it's up to you. So you can decide whether or not you want to remove those outliers. So I'm going to keep that. Um, they also have a lot of other nice uh, transformers that like allow you to clean the data, for example, dimension reduction, uh, balance the data, uh, and also encode the catalog data, um, format strings, uh, group by, um, etc. So uh, the most common and also split data, uh, time series data, etc. So the, probably the most common data cleaning tools are all uh, available. Uh, and also, uh, if 
uh, you have the if you are if you are using a for private AWS account, you can even chat for data cleaning. So, uh, which means that uh, Canvas will use uh, large language models that um, from AWS uh, to help you to clean those uh, data. So you can just type talk with uh, with AI uh, with uh, with a natural language and the chat AI will clean the data for you. So as academia, as academy uh, account, we don't have a license. So if you see uh, chat for data crap, uh, you probably will have error. So because we don't have the, uh, we don't have AWS bedrock in AWS Academy. All right. And so now that's the data cleaning part. So if you go back to the data flows, we can see we we start change the type, filter, drop the columns, etc. Again, so if you can, we can reduce this data flow. So just switch a different data source, and then uh, you can do the same procedure applied to the to other data set. And next, we go to the analysis. Uh, so in this analysis, so they are going to analyze your data. You can create a data quality report. Uh, bias report, you can also calculate the feature correlations, uh, etc. So let's do a, a quality report and let's call it uh, date quality report. And we're going to predict the price and that will be a regression model. And the report will be based on the sample data set. And let's create that report. And let's see if they can give us some uh, insights that uh, how our data uh, look like. All right, uh, so here we can see we have 30 features or 30 on columns. Uh, we only have 600 rows. So that's really a very, very small data set for machine learning models. Uh, we don't have any missing values. That is because we removed all the missing values. Uh, we have six numeric data. We have only one catalog data. And we have a 22 binary data set. So like whether or not you have uh, uh, air collisions, etc. So those are binary data set. We do have some warnings. Uh, so uh, like our target, uh, that I guess that because uh, we have very long tail. So uh, we have some outliers. And now we have a feature summary. So one thing that I noticed is that we changed the data type of the ID to strings, so that we don't want string to uh, we don't want ID as a, as a feature in the uh, in the prediction. However, uh, in the report, they still use ID as a number. So I think this is a bug that on Canvas. So hopefully they are going to fix this one in the future. Uh, and because ID is now uh, mistakenly considered numbers. It has the largest uh, prediction power, which is an error. And the other uh, feature that have high prediction powers are area, so the size of the house, the size of the land, which makes sense, and also year that house been built, uh, the bedroom, bathroom, uh, etc. So, so this also is just another chart to show the prediction powers. Uh, we don't have any duplicate rows because we keep the ID, so ID are all uh, unique unique for all the rows. Um, and here there's a target. So I guess because we have some very expensive uh, house price, so that's why you can see uh, it's not, not normally distributed. Again, this is really total up to you. So if you want to remove this outline, I could do that uh, in the, uh, uh, either after this uh, data quality report or before this data quality report. So you can, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't keep, if you don't want to keep that one, we still have time to remove that one. And, and they also have a quick model, so you can see that in the training data, uh, the the score is very high. In the validation data, the score is very low, so it's a overfit problem. Um, and also here are the visualizations. So I like this one uh, because they can tell you why those features are in have that high prediction power. So I guess ID has high prediction power. It just happens that uh, the expensive houses tend to have 
uh, big IDs and the cheap houses tend to have small IDs. So this is a coincidence and and again this is a total error. So uh, and the next area, so we can see that it has a very large uh, relatively high prediction power because normally when the, uh, when the house become uh, bigger and the price will be bigger and however we do have an outlier that this house is very big but you can see the price we have a very low uh, cheaper house and those the others feature like lot size and a number of bedrooms year that house being built um, number of the uh, bedrooms we can see the more bedroom we have the more expensive the house uh, and also the same for the bathrooms. Okay, and the uh, basement. So if you have a basement, your price is higher. If you don't have a basement, your price is lower. Uh, house type. Uh, and we can see that single family home are relatively more expensive than the townhouse and condo. Okay. Um, so you can check all the other features if you like. And I think, uh, Based on this chart, uh, you can decide whether or not you want to include like dryer, garbage disposal, a ceiling fan, a window in your prediction because they don't have a very high prediction power. So let's go back to the data flow. Okay, so here you can see we generate this uh, report and we are going to add additional transformer uh, where we are going to drop um, columns that uh, we think do not have a very high um, prediction power. Okay, so I think we don't need this uh, garbage disposal. We don't also need that one. Um, ceiling fan. Okay, uh, we don't need those stuff. Um, you can also drop ID uh, if you like, um, and also um, you can also remove those outliers if you like. Uh, I'm going to keep ID because uh, when we are going to build train the machine learning models, we still have the the chance that we can not include ID in the in the data prediction. But I still want to keep ID because later, uh, if you want to check your accuracies, you need ID to match the data. All right, so at I think I'm happy with dropping those uh, three columns or three features that have very low or no uh, prediction powers. And now we're going to split the data. So we're going to split data. So we're going to use part of the data to train the model. And we're going to uh, use part of the data to test the model performance. Uh, so let's go to split. I think I can search, just search split data. Uh, we're going to choose the random split. Uh, uh, if your data is using for classification, you may want to use stratified. You can also split by the P or ordered split. Um, because I we don't have too many columns, I will use 90% uh, for the test and 10% uh, for the uh, for test. Sorry, 90% for training and 10% for the test. Okay, let's preview. Uh, looks good and let's add that okay uh so let's zoom in so now we have a fairly complicated uh data flow so uh in data science a majority of the time that we spend are in data cleaning so training data actually um is pretty easy in canvas all right so this is the training data set we are going to export that one to our s3 bucket so let's call it training data uh, we're going to save that into our s3 bucket and we're going to export uh, so it's a very small data set so uh, uh, it will be ready that in a, in a second okay so now i'm going to copy this s3 location and i'm going to bring that into the our data set so uh, import data set i'm going to call this one training house price 
create. And so I will use that one from my S3 bucket. So go and also check that. Okay, so those are the 90% of data that use for model training. Uh, and then I go back to the data flow. Uh, I'm going to export the testing data. So export S3 bucket uh, test data. Uh, choose the same S3 bucket and export. Okay. Uh, so that is a 10% 10, 10 data set for test. So the model will not see those data. Okay, uh, copy the S3 location, go to data set, import data uh, from the S3 bucket, and that is test house price. And we're going to import that from our S3 and copy and paste on the S3 URL and check this data set. So those will be used for the test and create a data set. Okay, uh, so now we have the training data and also the test data. So we're going right to our uh, data models. So let's go to my models. And right now we have empty models. So let's go ahead and create a new model. And the model can be used like prediction. In our case, we want to predict the house price. So we should choose a prediction. Uh, you can also do the image analysis, text analysis, and also you can use even fine tune a foundation model. So let's say we're going to predict house price. And the first step that you're going to uh, choose your data set. So we already uh, import our data into Canvas, so that is a training house price data set. And then we need to select the, the target column. So here you can see we're going to use the price. Uh, because we selected price, so it will be a, a numerical numeric prediction. And we can also configure the model. So first of all, as you recommended, uh, if your data is uh, Categorical data like classification and you can choose classification. Or if that's a forecast and you can choose forecast. Um, model objectives because we are using the 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 class uh, the prediction regression model. So uh, our evaluation matrix will be MSE, which is default one, or RMSE, R square, MAE, uh, etc. So those metrics are depend on the the type of the model. Uh, you can also choose the algorithm. So uh, you can choose auto, so that the canvas will select the, the algorithm for you. And also they are going to train the models, use uh, the best uh, parameters. You, have, you also have the choice to choose different models. For example, you can choose XGBoost, uh, Linear, CatBoost, uh, Random Forest, etc. Um, I don't know why they only provide those uh, options. Uh, so hopefully in the future, they can provide more uh, uh, um, options. Um, or you can choose uh, XGBoost or multi-layer perception. So that is a new network. And you can choose a data split. So which percent go to the training, which percent go to the validation. Uh, and also you can choose the, the maximum candidates. So for example, um, if you choose the uh, XG boost and uh, you have the, uh, you can choose like say how many candidate, candidate models will be trained and also the maximum uh, running hours. Okay. Um, to save our time, we are going to use auto uh, and we will leave everything as default. So if you choose auto, so you don't have option to choose a number of candidate models. Right. And uh, beneath, uh, the model type, uh, you can see here are the columns. So just make sure that we uncheck ID. So that's very important. We don't want ID to be uh, in the in the part of the model prediction. Uh, we also have the choice that uh, to see the visualizations. Uh, 
And also you can also add additional transformers. So you still have the option here. You can manage rows, manage columns. Uh, you can also visualize the data. So if you click that, uh, you're able to create different visualizations uh, before you train the model. All right, uh, so I think I'm ready. Um, I can also do those correlation analysis. So I think I'm ready to uh, build model. So I'm going to just use a quick build. Uh, you can also choose a standard build, which will take two to, three, two to four hours. So I'm going to use a quick build to save the time. Okay, so I think uh, that is a model training. So you can see it's pretty straightforward and it's very simple. And all you need to do is that just use an auto model or, or you can choose a space model you like. And also you can choose like how many candidates you want uh, or like the, what's the maximum uh, training hours. And then we just wait the model to be trained. All right, uh, so now our model is ready. Uh, you can see the, uh, the most important uh, feature that in the model prediction is area, the size of house, followed by the year that house being built, the lot size, and uh, surprisingly, secret system is also uh, another very important feature. So if you have, uh, you all, you all, the price will be much higher uh, uh, than if you don't have. And, and also like, uh, fireplace alone um, okay and also host type so we can see the single family home and they have a relatively high uh, house price then the townhouse then condo all right uh, so those are the impact and, and if we check the uh, the score so that you can see those are the predicted versus uh, uh, the real values. So we can see we have one outlier uh, uh, that uh, we give very, very high price uh, than actual value. And we also have a house that uh, is very expensive, but we give it a very low value. So those are the two outliers. Um, uh, if you're interested, you can check those uh, uh, data point. But for the majority of the, uh, of the data, I think it's, it's okay. Uh, and also you can check the advanced, uh, wow, the R square is extremely low. So um, in this prediction, um, and also the errors, errors is uh, normally distributed, so that's fine. However, our R square is very low. So, uh, and also actually our RS, RMSE is very, very high. Okay, so it's well, it's, so the, um, uh, let's see, let's try to make a prediction. So, uh, so there are several ways, I think, to increase uh, uh, the R squares. So number one is that, of course, if you use, uh, uh, if you train the models longer, um, probably you have a better uh, performance. Um, we just use a quick training. So, and if you train like for several hours and I'll try different options, so probably your model will be better. Uh, and also, uh, if you reduce outliers like in the in the price, uh, probably uh, you uh, it will be better. Uh, so you can try different options, or you can try to remove some features or bring some feature back. All right, let's just use this prediction and to predict uh, uh, a value. So you can make a single prediction. I don't know why ID is here. So, but I think when we um, train the models, we excluded ID. Um, let's double check, let's see. Yes, ID is not in the in the column. So ID should not be trained in the prediction or in the, in the model training. Uh, however, it's still available in the prediction. So that's weird. Let's say we're going to train a, a predict uh, um, a house. Let's say right now it's uh, this much. Let's say it has like only one bedroom and also only one bathroom. Um, how much will be the price? Okay, so we can see the price is much lower. And what if it had, it's a townhouse. Um, and also it built um, in, in 2000. 
Um, and now the size, uh, let's give it a larger size. Let's see, it has uh, 2,800 uh, square foot. Okay. Uh, now let's just run this prediction. See whether it will be more expensive. It's actually to be more expensive, although it has uh, uh, less bedroom and also bathroom. But I think the because the the, the size of the house, the area of the house, uh, it's very important. So that increase the values. Okay, so that's a single prediction, so that you can predict the house, the value that in real time. Uh, you can also do the batch prediction, where you can see automatic, which means that. Uh, you can select a data set, and every time the data set is updated, they will automatically uh, make predictions. Uh, so this is very helpful in the production. So every time when you have a new, like some people that they, they bring some new record of the house, and you can, you can give them uh, a, a prediction. Also, our accuracy is very low uh, in this model. Or we can do a manual prediction. So let's use our test data. So. Uh, I don't think we're going to have very good um, result for test because our training data, the, the R square is very low. So let's let's just go ahead and generate the prediction. Okay, uh, so uh, it has been generated. Uh, well, we are waiting for this to be, oh, okay, it's already. So you can be preview. Uh, so I don't think they use ID because ID was not uh, included in the training. So those are the predicted price, like for a bedroom with three, bathroom with two, single family home, the prediction is that. So let's download the data. Okay. And you can also deploy your model. So, uh, which means that if you're happy with uh, uh, your model, you can, you can deploy the model uh, to an instance that is uh, running uh, 24 hours, uh, 7 days, and then you can just make predictions that outside of the canvas, like you have an instance that's running that to to inference uh, to make predictions. So you can call the APIs outside of canvas and use it, use that model. So that you can deploy a model. Uh, and you can also, uh, if we go to my models, um, you can also register the model, which means that you are going to share this model with other users. So other users will be able to access your model and use your models. And in the ML operations, so those are the jobs that you, you have defined. For example, if you have the automatic prediction or if you have any uh, deployment and you will be able to uh, check the status here. All right, so here let's go back uh, to the data set. Um, Oh, actually, uh, uh, I'm going to create a new data flow. So uh, I'm going to use the data uh, that I'm going to manually upload. So remember that the data that we downloaded the, the, the predictions. So I'm going to use that data. So oh, I should not upload the flow. So I'm, I should import the data not up import data flow. So I'm going to import data. And uh, uh, I'm going to upload the predicted uh, house price. So that is this one. Okay, so those are the predict price uh, because those are the float. So uh, in original data, the prices are all integers. And import that. Okay, and I'm also going to add the the test data where we have the true values. So that already on already on our cameras. So I'm going to use the test because we use the predictions with the test data. Import that, and then I'm going to join both data. So combine join. Uh, I'm drawing those two data based on ID. Okay. Uh, we're going to use inner drawing. Uh, so here you can see ID zero are from um, the test, I, I believe. And it's, yeah, because the price are integers. 
and so press zero are the, the true value um, and price one are the predicted values because those are floats all right and then we're going to add that and uh, let's go to the analysis uh, so let's first let's do a feature correlation and create so we will we won't see that the, the accuracy for the predict price versus the, um, the true price so we are looking for Price. Uh, okay. Um. I think I might have made a mistake. So let us go back to flow. Okay. All right. So I made a the, the correlation on the original 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 data. So let's. Um. Okay. So we are going to add data inside from the joint data. So get data inside. Uh. And then let's do the feature correlation. Uh. Let's see. Create. All right, here we go. So we are looking for price versus price. Uh, so where is a price versus price? Okay. Uh, so it looks like they are uh, only display correlation matrix for the top uh, fifty combinations. Uh, so it looks like our price versus price has a very low uh, correlation. So we need to go back to our data flow. Um, let's add a transformer and let's also drop the other column. So we just keep the, the price. So let's manager and job. We're going to select all of them, but we're going to keep the price. Okay, so we can keep the price. Uh, let's also keep ID. Okay, uh, so uh, let's keep the predicted and or actual price. And then after we dropped uh, the other columns, so let's create a new insight. Uh, now let's do the feature correlations, create. Um, Okay, uh, so we can see the correlation is uh, 0.8. Um, okay, uh, it's not that bad, uh, it, but it's not good enough to be shown in the previous correlation analysis, I guess. Uh, it's not that bad. Uh, if we want to create a scatter plot, let's see. And we use price versus price. Okay, so this is how the chart looks like. So uh, we have the predicted price versus the, the real price. Uh, we can see we do have some kind of errors. So it, ideally, if the accuracy is very high, we should have very, very narrow line. Uh, looks like we do have high accuracy in the lower prices, but we don't have high accuracy for the, for the more expensive houses, which kind of makes sense because, you know, the, the expensive houses, especially like the house is about 50,000. So um, the other important feature that will control the, the price of the house. Okay, uh, so I think that's uh, the entire process of using AWS Canvas to build a, a complete a machine learning pipeline. So uh, Canvas is a really nice tool that uh, we can clean the data, uh, we can uh, train our models. So if you have time, uh, feel free to choose uh, the, uh, the form mode to uh, use a standard build to optimize the models. So hopefully you will have a, a bad performance model and then you can deploy your model, like you can use predictions uh, in Canvas or you can deploy a model outside Canvas to use the models. And finally, so when you are happy with your uh, machine learning pipeline, and uh, so the model will always be saved under your account. Uh, so you need to log out Canvas. 
want to save our credits. So when we log out, so we are released those resources uh, so that uh, to save our uh, AWS uh, credits.